I'd now like next to move on to the vision part of my talk. And let's start with this phrase, the theme of this conference, inspiring what's next. And I suppose most of you came to this conference thinking, okay, we're going to talk a lot about it. the next step in technology and what that's going to mean for my career and what's that going to mean for my organization. Right? I hope so. <laughs> because we are going to spend a lot of time doing that. But I'd like to start this conference and start the week by having you also ponder and take some time and think through what's next for our planet. And in turn, what does that mean for you personally? And what does that mean for you in terms of your organization, your family, your community? It's interesting, isn't it? To take the time to think about what our future is going to be like. And we can, we can certainly start with this notion. We live in a very complex and interconnected world, a natural world and a human world. And particularly, you use geography, the science of our world, to both organize and also understand all the interconnections and the processes of evolution that are underway. And this is constantly changing, this world that you and I live in. And it's accelerating. In fact, the pace of change is accelerating almost exponentially. And for us, it's creating many challenges, threatening our natural world clearly, and some would say threatening our future as human beings. And the evidence is clear, some of it shown by your very work overpopulation, climate change, effects on issues like drought or loss of biodiversity, increasing urbanization, as shown by those incredible globes that were here. The human footprint on the natural world is impacting our world exponentially. So in some ways, we say, we could say, not in some ways, actually, absolutely. We are clearly in a place where humans have never been before. And from my perspective, we're going to have to address this. And it's going to take us fundamentally understanding our world deeply. As my good friend Richard Saul Werman often says, understanding precedes action. It'll also take us collaborating and then moving out with action. And what should we do next? It's a question that probably comes up in, in your mind frequently. It certainly does in mine. And there are lots of interesting actions occurring. But for us in this room, certainly for me personally, it's about applying the power of digital geography to create a better future. This starts with envisioning what's possible and then looking at all the things that you are actually doing and accelerating them, improving, improving efficiency, making cities smarter, protecting biodiversity, and in integrating environmental thinking into virtually everything we do. And at this point, it's kind of like a heavy number for you, because I know it's a huge responsibility for you. At this particular point, we need to accelerate. You know what I'm saying? I mean, now is not the time to take our oar out of the water. We have to accelerate, keep moving, keep learning. That's why you're here. Keep understanding and leverage our best technologies and and science, our best geographic sciences, and our best holistic design thinking to turn this around, to create both a sustainable and a better world. The science of wear provides us with a framework and a process for creating and applying geographic knowledge, 
the foundation of our work. It allows us to collect data, analyze it, understand it, work in collaborative ways, and then action it into action. This is the power of GIS, or the power of geography, driven to make better decisions. And this science is foundational for applying geography through things like GIS, and also this whole new expanding world of mapping and location intelligence. What is it today? What is GIS today? Well, for many of you, it's a system for managing and applying and, and analyzing geographic information and solving problems holistically. That's clearly it has been our agenda for many years. What we sometimes lose sight of is the fact that it has these three very powerful conceptual notions. One is integration. That's integrating data. It's integrating people. And second, analytics, the power of computational geography. And finally, the power of mapping and communication, all about creating understanding as a platform for doing your work better in your organizations, but also in a greater context in society itself. And this, this platform is advancing rapidly. It's integrating in data, new computational things, new innovations, and it's becoming easier, more open, more accessible to everyone. In the area of data, we're now collecting observing virtually everything that moves and changes, creating massive loads of data. In computing, we're not only doing computing faster, Moore's Law is accelerating, actually, but also in different ways, distributed computing, machine learning, etc. And finally, in the innovation area of GIS, lots of things. That's actually what I'm going to spend a lot of time on, and you'll be studying it all week. These forces are expanding the power of our work. This new pattern that's emerging, has been emerging for a half a dozen years, is a, a new generation of GIS, and it's based on a concept of sharing and collaboration, sharing information, and leveraging the technologies of web services to distribute our knowledge and interconnect our knowledge and engage everyone. That's the big story behind it. And this technology is literally driving major aspects of digital transformation in organizations. And what do I mean by that? I mean taking the sequential workflows of work that we have automated, let's call it first generation automation, digital automation, and transforming it so that things are all interconnected. Let's call it simultaneous. Different aspects of organizations all sharing common information and workflows all at the same time. Changing fundamentally how organizations as a whole do their work. Different kind of organization. What makes this pattern so interesting and compelling is that it's much easier and it's more accessible, and it's interconnected. It brings together lots of little technologies like the concept of web maps and web apps and smart mapping and hubs and location analytics and visualization. It brings all of that together like a constellation, and it's fueled by powerful, exponentially growing data and analytics. Let's look at a few of these little aspects. One of them is web maps. Web maps engage and interconnect everyone. As the governor said, they're becoming a kind of language. And with the billions of these that are produced every day, they're indeed supporting new kinds of collaboration and communication, actually collaboration and problem solving. They're becoming a language for problem solving. He couldn't have said it better. And second, apps are taking the science of where, your work, everywhere. It's taking it to the edge. The edge meaning into the field. The edge meaning into the 
into the boardrooms with dashboards in real time, into buildings, into the whole globe, to access and provide knowledge to citizens. It's, it's a wide swath. And the new generation of tools, location intelligence tools, are helping us understand. And these are not for just GIS professional. It's opening up the whole spatial analytic world to everyone. Little tools like Insights let me drag and drop and experiment and explore information. Mere mortals can do it. Not that you're not mere mortals, but I mean, you know what I mean? It's easier. <laughs> you guys are not laughing, so I'm wondering what I did. And Earth observation combined with GIS and artificial intelligence is helping us provide real-time global intelligence. This interesting model built by NOAA and USGS combine rainfall and digital terrain models to be able to predict five days out, 10 days out, even 15 days out when the, when the actual flood will occur. And all of these sensing systems are helping us both understand what's going on, but also predict and make, make better decisions at many scales. This is what some people have called the fourth industrial revolution. We will wire up the whole globe. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are the organizational infrastructure and the people who are actually making that come to real life. So what is next? And this is both well, it's personal for me, but I think it is going to be massive transformation, not just a little department here or a little activity there. It's going to be interconnecting and all of the data and the information and the processes and the work flows that are all going to be happening at the same time. One of my friends called it simultaneity. <laughs> Organizations will start operating and collaborating at the speed of light. And that, of course, requires trust. All using the power of location to do the integration. Outcomes will be smarter organizations, more responsive, more efficient, and better acting. This digital transformation is just beginning. We're living in an era of exponential growth. And certainly that's affecting everything. We see it in little parts. I mean, Moore's law taken to its logical connection is suddenly now emerging in the form of autonomous vehicles or robotics or AI or immersive experiences. All of those things are going on. But at the same time, notice the little white text in this display. Geodesign is starting to pop up. Geospatial solutions, geoaccounting, pervasive mapping. And WebGIS is providing already a kind of fundamental role of organizing the content in this travel log that we're on to create pervasive geographic understanding. This will integrate geography, your work, into virtually everything that everyone does. How do we take the next step on this? My sense is we need to embrace this kind of transformation that's happening. We need to drive it. We need to integrate into it the science of where the work that you do in an accelerated way. And it starts with envisioning a better future. I mean, in order to get better, we have to think about being better. <laughs> we have to have a vision for creating a better planet, not be at the effect of the future, but participate and create in the future. This requires a kind of consciousness change. And I think I know of no better audience than you to be able to move and do this, to take initiatives, to create solutions, to participate, to collaborate, to embrace this technology and drive it, to create a geoscience-based foundation for our future. I like to call it societal GIS. I don't know exactly the name to call it. Actually. Now, is this vision actually possible? 
Or is this just some crazy thing Jack is talking about with PowerPoints? And there may be skeptics here in this room, and I appreciate your skepticism, but this is actually a, an area where I've done a lot of thinking. And my sense over the years is that this is not simply possible, this is essential. And in some ways, it's also inevitable that this evolution in human civilization will occur. And you, again, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to lay on your shoulders this level of responsibility, but you are going to be participating in this and making it happen. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I, I, could, I could tell a story about this. My wife told me, if they agree, have them stand up. That's just too much, right, Laura? <laughs> no, I'm not going to have you stand up. But I want you to understand. <laughs> okay, you can stand up. Okay, you can stand up. You can turn the lights on. If you, if you believe in this vision, why not just stand up? Show it. This is a vision, this is a vision that must happen, ladies and gentlemen, to address what's next in our future.